What's up, gifted family? Welcome to another episode of the show that is the GP YouTube. Just a reminder that if you support what we do here, make sure to go over to giftedperformance.com and sign up for our automated coaching service. For only a dollar a day, you'll get access to 15 highly customized training programs, a macronutrient calculator, our meal planning feature that lets you build and save meals based on your macros, as well as access to our private Facebook group. All subscriptions help us in continuing to put out great content to get you to your fitness goals. Thanks for stopping by, and without any further delay, let's get into today's video. Enjoy. And welcome back, folks, viewers, friends, pals, crew, and team to another episode of The Athlete Diaries. There's a coach, there's me, and there has to be an athlete. Our athlete today is the infamous Tasha Vanderberg, a top-level national figure competitor on her way to nationals right now, and her beloved coach, Cameron Cheek. Cam, how you doing? I'm doing well, man. You look good, good today, man. Your eyes, they look really nice today. Thank you. I like to I don't start know what with, I did with, with a really awkward compliment to Cam, and then he just like shrivels up in the back. He's like, hey, mom, thank you, thank you, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> so, Tasha, before we kind of get into the whole deal with your previous preps, current prep, uh, your relationship with Cam as a coach and whatnot, Give the people a little bit of an introduction into you. What is the Tasha V story? All right. Well, um, well, first, like currently, I am not doing anything bodybuilding related career wise, like my job. I am a funding coordinator at a merchant cash advance company. And um, a little bit about before, I was definitely not doing that. I was running and gunning now i was a little bit into a lot into drugs and just not being healthy at all it was probably weeks maybe that i would eat you know once twice a day maybe and um i was like probably a hundred and three pounds all skin and bones and i decided i wanted to change wanted to do something different my mom said something to me one day that kind of stuck with me. She said, you put all into this work and making sure that you can stay high and you can stay on drugs and you make sure that happens every day. Why can't you put that effort into something else? And it, it clicked with me and I was like, you know what, you're right. So I kind of put, I switched and I was like, let me put my effort into me. Let me put it into, you know, building myself up and seeing what I can do and see where I can go in places, you know, and not just like, oh, here I am. I wanted to be doing more than that. And I've dedicated into this and I'm loving the progress that I've been making where, you know, I never ever thought I'd be stepping onto a freaking national stage ever in a million years, but we're doing it and I'm stoked. You love to see it jumping in right in right there. So around the time when you were using the most, did you know Cam at this time? Were no, you guys was, friends, acquaintances? Yeah, walk um, me through the time frame. Okay, so this was probably, I think when I met Cam, I was about three, four years sober. So I had had some time, you know, under my belt already, but it, that was mainly just focusing on building my little triangle of, you know, mind, body, spirit. I was building that. I was getting myself back. So then after all of that, probably about 2000, I moved back to Georgia in 2017. I think I met him October, or a little bit before October of 2018. That's when we started. And um, around that time, I think everything, uh, my life on the outside was pretty good. Everything was building up and I was kind of in a spot where I didn't know where I was going to go with bodybuilding when I met Cam. Like, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. And he kind of like, was like, hey, you want to do a show? Like, let's let's do a show. Let's see what we can do. 
And I was like, mm, okay, I mean, okay, you think I could do that? He's like, fuck yeah, you know? Cam's been, like, my fucking support system from the beginning. And yeah. then, you know. That's, I, I, it, and it's always, it's so interesting to me to look on stories like yours and say, like, what if Tasha had never found bodybuilding? What if she had never gotten clean and, and found this life? What what a waste of talent that would have been because you've been in the, how, how long have you been in the sport now? How long have you been like seriously lifting and towards competing in bodybuilding? Since I met camp. So yeah. October 2018. Yeah. A couple years now. And you look at Tasha's physique and you're like, that's someone who has been training for bodybuilding for a decade, at least has to be at least a decade. <laughs> and we yeah. Can just, we can, yeah. I mean, I did do some, like, gymnastics, so I think we had, like, a, at least a little bit of, like, kind of a base, you know, my my frame is naturally just, like, gymnastics, it's, you know, I got the broad shoulders and, you know, legs for days. Your, uh, your dad bodybuilded, didn't he? Yes, my dad and, and my mom I didn't know was. this, I didn't know this until, I want to say it was maybe a year into working together like halfway through her prep and I started seeing her response as she was leaning down and I was like this isn't like your normal average response and then she was like oh yeah like that gym that you go to my dad used to bodybuild and I always went there growing up as a kid and I was like you didn't like think to tell me like oh yeah you know I've been around bodybuilding since I was a kid my dad competed like I got it in me (laughs) Nah, I didn't. Sure. Well, he was he was a monster too. My dad was huge. I need to see some pictures. pictures. I wish I could find some. I wish he was the same. We kind of did like the opposite. Like I went straight on into bodybuilding, and then my dad kind of like lost it and went to the other side of addiction. So I think a lot of that played into this too, because I saw what happened. Like when you don't, you know, walk the straight line, and then I went the other way, and I'm glad I did. Yeah, I've noticed, uh, especially, you know, with my age and me being young, um, there's it, for a while, you know, and still for a while, I'm going to work most likely with more younger crowds of people. And I've seen that bodybuilding is one thing that can definitely mature somebody and make somebody grow up very quick. Um, so it, it definitely can, you know, shift somebody into a straightaway path. Yes, Tasha, is that something that you would agree with, kind of the regimented lifestyle of bodybuilding is is something that kind of keeps you on that straight and narrow, like you said? Oh, yeah, structure. I love structure. I like yeah. to be told, like, I like this, this, and this. Like, this is what you're going to eat. This is what you're going to do. If you tell me what to do, I'm going to nail it. That's just, I, think, I love that. And correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think in a lot of, like, uh, narcotics anonymous and recovery programs they preach structure a lot right they tell you to be oh, yeah. very regimented with your day do this at this time this at this time right yeah like get up make your bed you know do like normal things every single day and make a habit of those because obviously yeah, we're going to need to do habits so make healthy habits instead of so you slipped right into bodybuilding you fit right in I love it <laughs> she kills it she- so so someone who is a really quick adapter to the sport like bodybuilding, you mentioned that you did play, you did compete in gymnastics when you were younger. Did you play any other sports? Have you always been someone who's kind of like grabbed a sport, latched on quick and adapted really, really well? Yeah, I've always been like, I remember playing, I tried, it's always been gymnastics since like, you know, I was three years old. That's always been a thing. It's always been in the background, always there. But um, with like, I tried basketball I was so, I was just too much. Like, I was too rough. Like, if somebody took the ball, I was pushing them down. I was like, I can't do it. We can't do this. My mom was like, you're too aggressive. We're not. And then, we, you know, we dabbled in soccer. I don't like to run. So, I would be on the other end of the field just, like, waiting for the ball to come back. When it was there, I was pretty good. But I'm not running for it. And then, um, I think I've dabbled in, like, a lot of sports. Like, I've tried everything. If there's something and I think it's cool, like, I want to try it. Like the handstand thing. I see you guys doing handstands all the time. And I was like, oh, hell no. I'm about to walk this entire road on my hands. It didn't yeah. happen. 
I tried it. <laughs> it was gonna. It, it was funny. It's funny to say you you talked about like how your build is very like conducive towards gymnastics, like the very wide, broad shoulders, big back, well developed up, upper body musculature, and super muscular quads as well. It's like you're shaped very similar to our roommate Lexi. You guys have that very yes, similar kind of exact structure. So. Maybe uh, maybe if Lexi stops eating cereal, we'll get her on stage one time. We can talk as much shit about her as we want because she doesn't watch these. So, yeah. Talk <laughs> Lexi, right? <laughs> no, be nice. Just kidding. Just kidding. Number one fan. Oh. Um, big, big fan. Big, big fan. Um, so, now, talking about other athletics here. I'm just getting you super derailed. Cam's going to be like, can we just talk about bodybuilding? But, no, nah, that's what I'm here no, for. No, we're I good, just get you man. derailed. So, let's say we roll through Junior USAs, and they're like, the overall... Figure winner, hand the pro card to <laughs> Tasha Vanderberg. Get your pro Dude, card. It's, the, it's she's an amazing. Crying. She wouldn't even be able to get the trophy. She'd be crying too hard. She, oh, I forgot how to walk. I can't <laughs> do this. Now. That Dude, I don't know. <laughs> Once we towel off all the tears, we dry the stage and everything, and the moment settles and you're a pro, do you have any aspirations of branching out past bodybuilding? Or is bodybuilding something that you want to take to kind of like the pro level and then keep pushing it as far as you can? Yeah, I want to like, um, I definitely want to, I want to ride it out. I want to see how far we can go. <clears throat> like, what if we go from just beginning all the way to Olympia. I want to try that. I want to cruise all the way up. That yeah. That's yeah. goals. Outside of like, do I want like, I don't know, like my career into bodybuilding? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Like sure. what I want. Um, maybe. Yeah. I've, I found I really like posing and um, I feel like maybe like one day I'd be interested in just, branching out and maybe dabbling in it a little bit you know it as if I like it. I have an attitude problem and I don't really like you know I I'm weird about telling people what to do so it just might not be my thing but I'd be willing to like give it a try give it a go you know so I think if, I, think I could I could see you as someone to me, I'll just give Tasha all my clients Tasha you'll kill somebody there's a couple <laughs> you'll kill there's oh, a yeah. few of them you're gonna kill <laughs> Hey, Tasha, I went over on my refeed today. Yeah, I know, and I'm outside your door. Come see me, bitch. <laughs> yeah, put your, <laughs> just go ahead and get a weighted vest because we're going to run it out. Just put your hands up. We're going to fight. Yep. So, Cam, tell me, tell me a little bit more about when you guys first kind of linked up and started working together. What were your first impressions? What were the first areas that you wanted to kind of improve upon, et cetera? Uh... Yeah, man. So to answer a couple of those, I don't know if I'll fully be able to because at the time she was really, I had worked with a couple, you know, just general population type type clients, but she was probably one of my first, if not my first, like athletes. And so at that time too, I had, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. At that time too, I had um, started coaching maybe three, four months prior to even meeting Tasha and taking her on. So I didn't really have the full knowledge that I do now in terms, or I either, you know, I didn't know whether with, with figure, what really to focus on, et cetera, stuff like that. And she had already been training for a, a little bit and had a solid base, but, uh, Tasha, you said that you were telling that I was telling you to compete, but I remember I just wanted to get you jacked, and we hadn't talked about the stage, and you brought it up to me, and I was like, oh yeah, you know, like I can do your off season, I can pass you off to Paul to do your prep or something like that, and you're like, oh, you can do it, and I'm like, uh, I don't know, man, I don't really know what I'm doing, maybe, and you're like, ah, you can do this, like just take time and learn, and so she was really, uh, um, yeah. Yeah, Kristen was she, kind of the one I originally had spoke to. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and uh, so really, if it weren't for Tasha, I mean, I, I think I would have found my role in the sport, but maybe not as early as I did um, without her, like, pushing me to get there. And she's probably someone that's really helped with building up my client base in terms of taking somebody that just looked like – you know, your regular everyday Karen off the streets to, whoa, she, she's, she can do something. So 
she's made a huge impact in terms of um, you know the upcoming success that I have had and everything like that um, but yeah we started that October um, just went into an off season um, you know I tried new methods I'd never done before and every time you know I told Tasha like oh you know like I'm not 100% sure here, like, this is a new learning thing, and we would talk about it together, and she's like, oh, it's okay, you know, if you mess up, like, we'll learn from it, blah, 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 so she was very supportive in terms of me not having to worry about, oh, if I fuck up, she's leaving, you know, it was kind of like, a, let's learn this thing together, um, so, yeah, that that was nice, it's, she's, she's like my day one. <laughs> That's always that's always good to have the client like that. It's, it's, Tasha, we need more. We need more of you in the world. More of the hey, you know. We know we're all human. You fuck it up, Cam. We're not gonna hold it against you. We were both. And what's hilarious? It, what What's hilarious? And I'm sure we'll get into it. But her first peak, I, I was just way overwhelmed with the amount of athletes I put in the show. Got way too ahead of myself. Bit off more than I could chew. Just butchered her peak on the very first show after working so long together and then you know we compete the next weekend and it didn't butcher my peak though there was so many you don't have the eye like me i butchered it <laughs> oh, there were so many things like oh my gosh the stress you know, i was up that entire night the entire night i didn't rest my legs and then i warmed my legs up behind stage I would oh, yeah, squats was in my heels. So I trashed my kind of impressive. It's kind of impressive, though. I mean, I thought so, too. I was like, real, I could do some squats and some fucking heels. And then I was like, everybody else is just, like, smiling. I mean, I was like, oh, I wasn't supposed to be doing that. Okay. She walked out, me and Paul yeah. were like, why do her legs look like that? I made sure they were hot. That's how pumped I got them. <laughs> All the they blood, were... water, substrate, everything. All and my upper, my upper body was pretty flat too because I was focused on my legs. I was like, "That's my, that's what I gotta drill is my legs," you know. So I'm just like pulling on this five pan band, like not really. And then I did a little bit of push ups, and it was like started to fill out. By night though, we flipped it around by that night show. Yeah. You did. So Tasha, tell me a little bit about kind of like the same question that I asked Cam, those those early days of working with Cam, how it influenced you as a bodybuilder, but how it also influenced you as a person as well. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, OK, so Cam told the light side of it. Um, there was a lot there was when I first started with Cam, he he was very passionate, dude. Like, I mean, co convinced me that, you know, this was like a thing, you know, this was cool. You kind of got me hyped up about it. Yeah, I might have mentioned the show because Kristen did hype me up about that one. It was a little <laughs> misconstrued. But, but I wouldn't even have brought it up if I wasn't, you know, like full faith in him. Like, okay, we've got this, you know. And even along the way, we it was kind of like a learning process for both of us. And um, there was a time where I feel like Cam was like, okay, am I gonna be able to fucking keep, am I gonna keep going? Like, am I gonna be able to coach? Am I gonna be able to do this? You know, some things had happened and it was a really hard time for him. Like it was really hard. He had a lot going on. And for a 20 year old, it was kind of like, dang, this kid is, I mean, strong. Because, yeah, he was like, you know, he was very, he, he had a lot. And there were some days where I was like, all right, is he okay? You know, whatever. Is he going to be all right? But he pulled through. And I feel like he tunneled visioned. And he, every single goal Cam has told me that he wanted to do, he's done. Everyone. He was like, at first he was like, I want to work with Paul. And he made it happen. And then he was like, I'm going to work with Gifted. And I, I didn't know if it was going to happen or not, but it happened. And I was like, holy shit, he did that. Like, oh, wow. He, you know, he's with like a whole team now. Like, he's a big thing. And then, you know, he's getting competitors on stage. He's bringing in pro cards. He's bringing in natural competitors. He's bringing in, you know, supplemented competitors. He's peaking people in like a week. Like, the things this... The things the kid has done, 
despite how he started his career, is a story all on its own. And I'm so, so proud of you. We all are. We're but all very proud me, of, this, of this young guy. <laughs> when I met him, he was an influencer. He was posting oh, discount man. codes for protein and ice cream. she still cream. loved me then. And she still loved you. You loved Cam before I loved Cam. So that's <laughs> that's that's saying something. And we so, built a good friendship out of it, too. You know, that was actually, that was actually going to be my uh, next question. I was yeah, going to say, how, mu even... how much does that relationship between you guys kind of like drive what you do together like how much does the relationship that you guys have drive you as a competitor tasha and then you as a coach cam um you know it it it's it goes far especially you know with the whole trust side of things and you know there's something different especially you know ryan i, I heard i learned the term from you because you told me to quit doing it but the imposter syndrome thing and when i first started out you know with no degree like i'm working around a bunch of people who have like you paul thomas like everybody has all these crazy degrees and stuff and it's really easy to be like do i really know what i'm doing here don't know what i'm talking about and so it, it's nice working with someone you know when you're starting out with that that side where confidence isn't your your best uh i guess attribute that i have someone that's like you know you do your thing you do what you think you need to do and no matter what i'm not going anywhere so having that trust there is nice and you know just especially with her like getting in her head sometimes because you know you'll struggle with anxiety and worrying about yourself especially as a competitor most competitors do but, you know, I think me being able to tell her, like, yo, like, I got your back. Like, you think I'm going to let you fall? You know, I think that that helps and goes a long way because she knows that I mean it. And, you know, it, it's just nice, too, um, you know, working with someone that you have a relationship with, too. And, you know, it makes it more fun, not as robotic, not like I'm just working with a number. You know, she's... We'll, we'll hang out on holidays, get together, and, you know, she's babysit my son, kept him overnight, and outside of, you know, my mom, that's, like, the only person that's ever done that. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's nice. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And um, from from my side, it's been, like, it's been, at the beginning, we, we were, I did have a lot of anxiety, and I was like, oh, shit, you know, all the time, because I'm just naturally anxious, and it was it was crucial that I had Cam there like, no, you got this, you know, like that reassurance this year. It's been like, it's been, I trust it. it I trust everything. He, he never, he's never failed me. Everything that we've done, we fixed. Like I have no, no reason not to trust the process. So it's been very smooth. It's just kind of like he tells me what to do and I'm going to do it because I trust the process. I and will say it. Here, go ahead we've had an open line of communication because at the beginning I had never touched any kind of supplement ever, like nothing ever. So that was like a big thing for me. I was like, Oh, sh you know, like what's going to happen? What am I going to do? You know, whatever. But having Cam there and, and being able to have a open, trustful line of communication and a friendship, I was able to tell him everything just right off the rip. Like, Hey, this is happening. Hey, this is happening. Never felt like, I can't tell them something, you know, or whatever that played a big part in having that, that friendship and that bond has made that a lot easier. I will say too, that it, it also, this year it's way more easy, but at first, when I first started out, um, working together with her, uh, being such good friends that we are and also coaching her, it was tough sometimes you know separating the two and also laying down the law when it came to coaching you know um and she she's an excellent athlete but there may have been like once or twice last prep where she would have been like oh like i just had a bite of this like she never binged or anything mm -hmm. like that but or times where maybe she had slacked off on logging stuff in and i'm like yo tasha like you know better than this and like chewing her out a couple times and you know, at first there was times I let stuff slide where I originally probably wouldn't with most people just because it was so, so different to confront her about it when we were as close as we are. Um, 
but you know over time you know she she's understood and i've been able to realize like you know if i'm getting on to her it's because i care it's not you know i don't i don't need to feel guilty about chewing her out or anything like that um and you know i just didn't want to be that guy that has like small man syndrome you know but no now he's like he's like coach moment you know, I got yeah. a coach moment, For and he'll like he'll embrace me, and he's like, "All right, listen, you got to do better." I'm like, "Disclaimer, <laughs> still love you. What the hell are you doing?" Yeah. <laughs> Big I feel like yeah. uh, I feel like if Anthony watches this, he'll he'll know too, because whenever I have to have that coach moment with him, I send him a text to start, and it just says, "Bro, come on," and then everything that follows after that is, "I'm gonna yell at you." You're, it's time yeah. for you to get yelled at. Like, bro, come on. You know better than this. And then followed up by, I still love you, but Jesus, son. Yep. <laughs> Make me pull out all my goddamn hair. <laughs> I got wait, a couple I left. Need that. I need that. Cam, Ed, sometimes they like put me right back into place. I'm like, okay, I fell off for just like a second and now I'm back. We're good. We're good. Don't want to piss the kid off. It's good. <laughs> It's tough, too, because when you're younger, you know, especially at first when I told you I was kind of lacking that confidence, even though I knew like what I was talking about and knew that I needed to straighten somebody up, it's almost like, is it my place to be able to call out someone so much older than me? Like, can I do this? Am I allowed to? Like, I don't, I don't want to be an ass, you know, because I've, I've had coaches in football that I just unnecessarily just take full advantage of that whole hierarchy thing. And I never want to be that guy, but you have it, never been that I've, guy. I've learned how to, you know, separate it. I remember the first time I had a client who I think was like 45 or 46 year old woman call me dad. And I was like, wait, hold on, hold on. This, that's, that's, wait, that's really weird. I, I am, I'm this age. You're that age. Why are you calling me that? And then I was like, oh, okay, it makes sense. You know, it's kind of the relationship there. But yeah, I mean, it, and Cam, it can be it can be a tough one on the coaching side, navigating that friend and client relationship. But at the end of the day, you're <laughs> being a better friend by holding her accountable. You hold Absolutely. her accountable, she gets a better result in the end, and everybody wins. You look back on that conversation and you say, you know, Tasha, I remember when you ate that half a cupcake and I yelled at you and you got all pissed off at me. We didn't talk for a day. <laughs> And you were like, you know what? It all worked out in the end. Being a worse friend is being like, oh, you know what? You had a half cupcake. You should have had two instead. You earned it. You worked so hard. Well, yeah. yeah and after her, uh, after her first season, um, she had a pretty rough rebound coming out of it. I mean, literally Thanksgiving was like two weeks after a show. Like, it's bound for disaster. And her first time competing. And I remember at first, because we took like a three or four month break just so she could, you know, get with family and kind of be a normal human again and everything like that. And I knew she would come back. But at first, after uh, the show and everything, you know, she didn't track anything at all, wouldn't fill out your sheets. And I'm like, yo, Tasha, like, you got to do this. Like, she wanted to do a show like Junior USA's early in, in the year before everything got postponed. And I would just tell her, you know, like, I'm only getting on to you because you've told me what your goals are and I have to hold you to that standard. And, you know, if she were to just tell me, like, oh, I don't care. Like, I don't care if I get fat. Like, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Then I'd be like, okay, no, cool. But you tell me you want to do a show. I got to hold you to these standards. Yeah, that scared me. I'm definitely going to a uh, reverse diet or a recovery diet. Whatever we got to do out of the show, I'm listening full throttle. I, I believe after the show, we'll probably post a picture of the before prep, if I let Cam, the before prep <laughs> and the after because. Damn, if you don't trust and believe in his work and what he does, holy crap. It's like, oh, God. Yeah, this, it was this pretty one's bad. This be one, a big one. Yeah, this one was worse. I think my waist had got up. Okay, my waist is at like a 20. I'm probably, I think this morning it was like 24, 8, something like that. It's under 25 now. I got up to a 32. No shit. Woo! 30. 32 when I started the prep and I was able to put the suit on too. It's great. It's going to be great. I'm going to be so embarrassed. It's fine. <laughs> Just in like three and a half months too. It's nutty. Yeah, we flipped it. Full disclosure though, any prep that ends near Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas or the new year just it's a wrap you're done you're done for it's over. No, it's you over. better be ready to bring it 
or have no friends and no family. I had my birthday, my anniversary, and Christmas in a two-week period, and I was like, you know what? You know what? I'm a fat guy now. I'm I'm, I'm a fat guy. That's that's who I am. I love that though. I bet it was worth it, and you probably you're gonna be able to rebound quick enough. So I remember when I was down there visiting. And I would hear Ryan like in the kitchen <laughs> in the middle of the night. In the like looking around like little. heavy breathing, like <laughs> <laughs> more weird. cereal. He was trying. <laughs> hey, we all go through it. We all go through it. I like the, I like yeah. the people. I like the people that try an unnecessary flex, and they're like, "I'm four months post show, and I've only gained two pounds." It's like you're a piece of shit. Yeah. One liar Good or you're a piece of shit. How many times a week do you cry? <laughs> yeah. No, I don't want to do all that. Don't do that to me. I think it's all right, interesting Tasha. how even our athletes, Tasha's like, oh, recovery diet or reverse, like, knows what both of them are. I'm like, yeah, we're doing our job. <laughs> I listen. All right, Tasha, I got one more question for you, and it's a good one. So I wanted to ask you, coming from your background, recovering from – uh, a past of recreational drug addiction <laughs> to where you are now as someone who's a very successful bodybuilder, someone who a lot of people look up to, whether you'll admit it or not, whether you realize it or not, a lot of people do look up to you. Is that something that you as an athlete see as added pressure or added motivation? Or maybe it's a mixture of the two? Um, definitely like added motivation because I hate letting people down. I don't like the feeling of, you know, disappoint anybody so if they're putting motivation into me and putting like even just a little bit into me I'm gonna I'm gonna be motivated to do more just to make sure you know everybody's happy how about on your end and on your end Cam any extra pressure to nail it or you guys just got it so figured out that it ain't a thing uh I don't know I kind of like to block it out and try and ignore it but I I've I've I kind of hate pressure, but also have realized that I do really well under pressure <laughs> at the same time, especially when I can stay confident about it. So, uh, I don't know, man. It definitely, you know, pushes me forward and not wanting to fail at all, especially when I have the coaches around me that I do and the athletes under me that I do have, you know, with, with building the connections and relationships, it definitely pushes me, you know, like that they need me <laughs> like, I need them, so. Yeah, and I hope that I hope that this prep ends with you know everything that you want out of it, and you get that big spotlight shown on you, and you get a lot more people kind of looking at you and seeing your story and how inspiring it is, because it really is. And you know, we you. gift to performance, Cam, all the coaches, all the athletes. I know all your buff bitches. We uh, that's, that's the group chat. Bitches. That's the group chat. Shout out buff uh, bitches. I love you, buff bitches. <laughs> It's now We're like all... the buff bitch vending machine. Yeah, what's up? We got a smorgasbord of stuff. How many people are in that chat? It's full. I, I think, yeah, it's pretty full. 30 but something? I, I love all of them. Oh my goodness. It's out of control. Hey, but at least you're out of my hair. You're At least you're out of our hair, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we got Jake together. too. Jake's on there. And Jake. And Jake. Oh, okay. Us featuring Jake. Oh, what if we cut Jake down the middle and he was actually cake? <gasps> this whole time, Jake was cake. Can what you verify that cake? he's not Wait. cake? No. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, there's one no, to leave you with. Don't, don't cut Jake. Nobody cut Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna read in the paper. Young boy cut in half. Wasn't cake. Cut Attacked cake. by a bunch of starving bodybuilders. <laughs> Oh Lord, I'm excited about. Okay, I'm excited about after Junior USA's. I'm gonna eat a piece of cake. Just throwing that out there. Sorry. Yeah, perfect. All right, love it. All right, let's let's go ahead and we'll wrap it up there for the first one, and let's talk preps on the next one. So everyone watching, if you're someone who likes more of the prep details, the macros, the cardio, the peaking, all that fun stuff, definitely come back for part two, which we'll be recording soon. Tasha, let the people know where that they can find you on the Instagrams. Tasha or Tosh point o underscore v. Oh, is it like Tosh point oh? Oh, I got it. Nice. Cameron Booty Cheeks, where can they find you? Uh, Cameron underscore Cheek 
on the Instagram. On the Instagram. Only you know one cheek, me. not two. Not Kenny two Wallach. cheeks. He's a one cheek man. Kenny, come on. <laughs> I'm a loyal man. As always, you can find me at the underscore squad father or at gifted performance on Instagram. Shoot us a DM, a like, a follow, all that good stuff. It's YouTube. And your boy stays getting fucked by the algorithm. So go ahead and drop us a like, a subscribe. It helps. Our corporate overlords would love it. I'm getting paid to say that, and I, I'm not shameful about it. We'll see you on the next one. And as always, stay gifted. Peace.